let's start today's session. Okay, so we stopped at this. What are we going to make right now? Hinge. Right? We work on the hinge now. We make one hinge. Now, our design is a very funny design. We have one brace, right? So how many hinges do you think we'll need? Well, that we kind of should use. One hinge. <laughs> one hinge, yeah. Let's just use... Uh, ah, sorry, it's uh, locked right here. No way. Is it in a different there? Yeah. No, it's in the same there. Oh, right, 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 right. I think the... Ah, handy. Oh, yeah. When you do this, you actually have, when you're in object mode, you actually have to grab the origin. Origin you can grab. Yeah. So I'm going to reset the origin to origin to geometry. Alright? And I'm going to grab all of them. Okay, there you go. Down a bit. It's so hard to work on this. Alright, that is good enough. You can pick the box. Pick the box? Yes. There is no one. Ah, right, right. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. But we'll do something about that in a bit. Uh, we'll, we'll put, we'll run some sort of a sheet. Good. I mean, like that. Yeah, but uh, you got a point. Yeah, I know, but, but the problem is this. In our design, when you really do this, they should actually cut a groove in the wood. A wood ka groove a groove in the metal metal. We haven't put the bolts here, but even with the bolts, that's how you would do it. Yeah? Um, but I, I just didn't do it to lazy man. You just make it easier. <laughs> Alright, so how many uh, are in the front view? I uh, need to need to adjust the side. No, no, and then I got no. Right. So, so my question is front view, back view. Okay. So one hinge. It's gonna be a one hinge piece. Alright. So again. To plan it, just imagine how are hinges made in the past. Metal is bent around, right? Now, okay, uh, this is something that I've seen. In the past, what they do is they have, they have a couple of types of metal. You have, I think it's called cast iron or is it melt iron? One of those two. One of these irons are extremely hard. So you're going to be using a pivot. Pivot to come in a tank or a hard metal. And it's not going to be something easy to bend. And in, back in that time, you won't actually have a, what you call a, a welding hack and taken on. Right? Not the traditional way of welding. Right? So what they do is, they would bend a piece of metal. Right? But if, into this metal, they actually put a cast donut-like shape, a tube. Into this tube will be a little another metal tube going in and etching in there, but again, I think back hook hook with them so that it will turn around. So this is what they use to adjust the the, the piece, right? This is a different metal. This is a hard metal, so that the other metal can roll over it. But in order to keep this in place, they use another metal which they bend over it, right? I mean, I'm just saying one of them. They help. Uh, the, we are trying to stick to a traditional style, but uh, there were times when they used bolted ones. There were different different techniques, right? So we're just going to go with this. Uh, by the way, after we finish today's lecture, uh, this modeling session, you guys have to create the rest of the parts for our next class. You need to just practice, try it out, right? Complete. Uh, I'll explain how we're going to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little. Hey, Matri was the master there. Ooh, I get what's happening. Yeah, I need to rotate this 180. 
Because remember, Mecha Mecha align ka is a bit off and so I have to make sure that I align that correctly. Now there you go. Is it aligned at the ends? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold on. Grab Y. Okay. That's good enough. Actually, grab Y just a bit. Yeah. Shift to fine tune your. Actually, still grab Y. Okay, yeah, that's as best as it can be. All right, so let me add something. Let's start working on it. We'll go with a cube, okay? Um, just make it thin. Um, okay, thin cube. Look him on the right side. Hey, I haven't switched on my cast. Key casts, right? Where is it? Okay, let me switch them on. Oh, that's weird. I never switched this on the other day. Start cream cast, okay. Anyway. Alright. So, yeah, something thin like this, not not extremely thin this time, it, it has to be a reasonable thickness, okay? Again, I'm imagining it, right? So you have to have the mentality to imagine, okay? Unless you're doing something that's real, then in that case, you don't use imagination. So I'm putting, no, I, I'm going to put one little uh, loop cut here. I'm going to put... Two loop cuts here and take it to the edges. Why am I doing this? What's, what's the term? Uh, what's the term for the edge? What's the effect called? Yeah, correct. Okay, filleting. Yeah, F I L L E T. But uh, filleting is there in everything. Um, you have filleting option in SOLIDWORKS here. Um, normally it's an engineering term, right? The, that term, whatever. Alright, so increase it to 1. Uh, I'm going to use 1. Okay, now I'm done with that uh, sheet. Okay? I'll get into tab view and uh, Actually, I'm going to bring it closer together. Right. Okay. This might be a pretty thick one, but it's all right. We'll just go with this and we can adjust the size later on. Right. Okay. Now the thing is, we want to start bending it. This thing, we want to start bending it. Okay, uh, how am I going to do that? Any ideas? Kine, Ben Lukran. No ideas. Anyone can give me an idea? Alright, so I'm going to grab the tip. I'm going to extrude it a bit. Right? I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to start bringing it out like this. I'm going to scale it up a bit. Uh, we can adjust the scale and stuff later. Now you get this is a bit of a, you know, process. Right? So in order for you to, to help you imagine what you're doing, I know that, that my circle is going to be somewhere around here. The tube. The tube. Right? So, just to help me as a reference, why don't I put a tube in there? I'm going to go from the uh, 
sorry, right view, uh, front view, rotate 90 degrees, right? And I'm going to look from this view and scale it down. This is for reference. I'm going to delete this after this, right? And remember, this is a mesh inside this mesh, okay? So, not, not a problem. I can delete it afterwards, right? I'm just trying to hold true the, to the art of, I don't know, bending a metal. You know, just keep on <laughs> bending it, right? Why do I, why am I doing this? Because then you would actually get the feel of that metal bend. It's not, it won't be perfect, right? It won't be a perfect circle. There is a tool that you can use to do this. Uh, spin. If I use spin, I can make a perfect arc like this. But I'm not going to use that. Yeah, 90 of this, 180 of this, 360 of this, spin bend, cocking head there. And you guys should have known this if you guys had done the second chapter of the tutorials. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure it's in the second chapter. Yeah. Alright, so let's just go like this. Again, I'm not going to be really perfect about this. Okay. Let okay, me zoom out a bit. Okay. Down. Okay. Down. Uh, okay, I'm gonna take a bit more. Okay, extrude, rotate, grab down, extrude, rotate, grab down, Ext sorry, extrude, rotate, grab down. Oh my god, extrude, rotate, grab down, extrude, rotate, grab down. Wait, I'm gonna take this away. Extrude, rotate, grab down. Okay, I'm, I'm going to start to get lazy right now because I just want to finish this as soon as possible. See, this is what happens when you're impatient. Oh wait, I might have made a couple of mistakes there. Okay, let's just stop there and take a look at what's, ha what's happened. Alright, so it's pretty okay. It's not uh, perfect because the thing is the guy is going to wedge in here, right? It's <laughs> Alright. See, this guy is going to be wedged inside here, right, like this. It's going to be like that. So there will be gaps at the edge. That's perfect. You want that gaps because you want to get the feeling of that thing is being wedged in there, right? Okay, so I'm going to delete this. I don't need the reference circle right anymore. So let me delete that. Okay, so a couple of things need to kind of fix up a bit. You notice that... When we were playing around with the extrude and then we were rotating it and scaling and stuff, you're kind of losing edge gain. Uh, okay, uh, the shape and the So what I'm going to do is go back in, grab the two, actually grab one side and take a look what I'm doing. I'm scaling them all inwards, right? Alright, I'll do the same thing on the other side and you'll see. I'll zoom in and do it. I'm scaling them in, right? And across on the x-axis so that they all eventually are trying to have the same x-axis. I don't want to go all the way in because, you know, uh, give a bit of that unevenness. Now it will look pretty decent. You know? Right? Uh, one more thing. When you do something like that, that edge loop, that loop cut, it will also get very close to the edge. So you actually will have a very sharp end there. I mean, it's okay because we are working with metal, but just to be on the safe side, you can actually move this a bit 
uh, back out so that you get that uh, you know that uh, that arc right also move this a bit backwards there you go okay so when you increase this up to this much and then go smooth and you start seeing how this thing looks like okay all right now there's a lot of stuff we can do to actually make this a lot better looking uh, well a lot more you know realistic looking I suppose you can actually go here and do this uh, when you start bending the end metals will start to get thinner right metal unequal thick foam in there, it will start to get thinner on the edges right hold on oh. so I'm going to move this a bit up and move this ok what next I'm going to put the tube in the center right I'm going to add another mesh inside this mesh. Okay? Circle. I'm going to reduce this to 10 vertices, right? Because uh, remember, we're subdividing. So the control vertices, we will use minimum amount. I'm going to look from the right side, rotate 90, look from the uh, front. Sorry, now I'm looking from the right side. Previously, I was looking from the front. Okay, reduce it, scale it up a bit, um, scale it up a bit, and like that. Anyway. Then extrude, sorry, I just pressed extrude, so uh, I'm gonna just scale it out like that. Okay? Alright. Then uh, that side, we call it another, I'm gonna scale it on the other way. Alright? I'm going to extrude this, right? Scale down a bit, right? I'm going to extrude a bit again, and this time again scale down. Now I'm controlling that edge. That edge will be now curved. Then I'm going to extrude again and scale, sorry, not scale, I'm going to move it in a bit, and again extrude and scale in. Now I've got an edge there. See? I got that curve. Right? Again, increase the number of uh, things and you start seeing it looking smooth. I don't need to detail the inside, right? Because, come on, nobody's going to see the inside of that part. Right? But in the picture, you might see this edge part. Right? I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, actually, it would have been so much easier if I had... Uh, Grab this thing, double, look from the right side, uh, rotate 180, move it to the back, right. and I'm going to use what? What was that little option to do? Yeah, W, bridge. And whenever you do bridge, just check whether your smooth function works. Yep, it actually works. Wow, lucky. Alright, so now that I've got this, I'm going to control plus, okay, and scale it in. Well, no, no, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to grab this whole thing. Okay, and move it inside. Alright. What? Okay. This is the problem with this X-ray vision. Sometimes it's difficult to control what you're seeing. Okay, grab this, then move it inside. I'll just leave it a bit, a bit out, alright? Yeah, just a little bit out. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. plus and uh, 
Control first, grab this and move it in just a bit. Right? Done. Now, me to get on a size is not correct, right? So, I'm gonna grab this one of these axes, control plus. I'm gonna grab the whole, right? Mesh and scale it up a bit. Yeah, it kind of has that feeling of being wedged in there, right? Actually, that's kind of nice looking, right? I'll leave that. I kind of like that look. Okay. Uh, if you feel like mitanga no maaboda mihen etre mi curve bani, right? If you feel like that's not nice, then it's a simple matter of uh, simple matter of putting a curve, you know, little loop cut there. And and another loop cut in here. Oh, right. Here. There you go. Now it will start to look a bit sharper. Okay? You don't have the dome shape. Okay? Again, it's your preference. Alright, so that completes the well, does it complete the bottom? I mean, it's up to you to decide. Let me scale this down just a bit. Maybe that size is that maybe a bit. Uh, dude, can you switch off the phone? <laughs> Alright. What's the problem now? What's incomplete about this? Okay. Bolts. Okay, so you not ideally want some bolts. I'm gonna create bolts again inside this mesh. Okay, again. I'm gonna put my cursor here, and I'm gonna add a sphere. All right. <laughs> uh, rotate this 90 in along this way. Okay, and I'm gonna go. Uh, sorry, extrude. Uh, extrude before extrude Kurima you are you have to be careful right because you have, you're not restricted right now so extrude along y axis okay just a bit again extrude okay scale down extrude all right uh, okay along y axis just a bit out extrude scale down 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 I've seen uh, iron bolts air the rivet that looks kind of like this, but I'm pretty sure there were different types of rivets. Yeah? There are different types of rivets. Uh, you have the you have those rivets where you put it into cold water, take it out, and then you jam it into the hole. And then at the warm warm fit kima, the metal starts expanding, and then it bolts into place. The other option is you take the actual piece that you want to put it in, and you put it in hot water. So that piece will actually start to get bigger. And then you jam the rivet. And then it cool rima, it starts to uh, grab the you know, two ways to do it. Alright, so extrude. So just, yep, yeah, what? Which way are you going um, No, it just depends. It's just a shape, right? It's up to you to come up with the creative shape. But uh, that's how they did uh, bolting back then, alright? Oh, sorry. I need to now do what? Grab the end. W. Loop tools. Oh, sorry. Merge. Go to merge and center. Right? Kind of looks like a river. Okay? Again, here's the thing. How do I know this? Is it something I came up with? No. By looking at stuff. When I make stuff, also I also will have to think about So I had to actually research myself, and once I finish something, I had to actually look at the real picture and then see ah that actually looks like that, right? And this is this is a this is a bit of a hard part for some people, but trust me, once you get used to modeling, this shouldn't be a difficult thing, right? I'm grabbing this whole rivet because obviously this is way too large, right? Scaling it down, 
to the size I want it to be. Scale it down. Ah, let's go scale it down. I'm gonna go with three rivets here. Double. Uh, actually, before I uh, double it, Okay, before I double it, I'm going to first align it so that it's going to be easier for me when I'm doubling it. Alright? I'm going to put it here. Alright, one little problem here. Um, again, you have to understand that the, once you try to get the render, the shadows and stuff will start to come in, right? What happens here is that this is a ribbon. Alright, perfect. But I have a flush end here. It's going inside this metal. And what is going to happen is you're going to get the illusion that, that something is wrong. It's like perfectly connected to that one. You won't get the feeling that this is a separate piece that's hooked onto it. Right? So to do that, again, simple matter. Grab this end, extrude, scale down just a bit. And now, I, what am I doing? Ah, okay. Grab this and move it in and now you should see there you go you have that lip there right now when the shadows fall you actually gonna get that illusion that okay that thing is actually on top of it right okay so now it's uh, on top of this thing I'm gonna grab this whole thing double no need to be perfect right because rivets. Ah, okay, that's kind of enough. It's kind of enough to be. Okay, there you go. Ah, let me get out of there. There you go. Done. And this is one object. And we are using one object here because this is all metal related, and so when we are texturing, we will actually have an easier time to texture like that. Okay? Alright. So, now let me quickly try to complete the top part. Actually, I need to move it out a bit. Okay, there you go. Alright. Then we have the complete part. How, what do you want me to do? How are you going to do this? Double. You want me to double. Rotate along the y-axis. 180. And bring it down. Well, this is a quite, this is a quite creative solution actually. Right? I've seen uh, stuff like this. But I don't know what's the name of this type of hinge. The well, advantage of this kind, of this kind of hinge would be that this guy can sit flush. You 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 put another you put another brace. You got it right. There is another floating hook connected here. A piece. So there are three pieces in this thing. And normally hinges have two moving pieces. Whereas in this case there will be three moving pieces. So the advantage of this is you can lift the whole thing up and you can cut the constant but tell it here. That will be the advantage. Again, up to you to decide on this. Actually we're gonna stop here. I'm gonna let you guys build this part. Okay, so here's what you want I want you to do. Yeah, because I'm done I, I don't know, I need you guys to do something, so I need to see you guys do work on like right? Or on uh, 3ds Max, whatever. That's okay. Here's what I want you to do. I want to complete this uh, suitcase by that's the next class. That's it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just need to model it. We model this in what? Three hours. Sunday. 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 My bad. Sorry. Sunday. The next class we'll have the two-hour session. Right. So I want you to model the top hinge. Okay? I want you to come up with arimati in the, you know, the hook. 
No, 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 Again, it depends on your design. There are a couple of types, right? You have those locks that tirigina set piece, matigina piece, yeah, alwala, then lock alwala. Up to you to decide. See, uh, my old design that we use. Uh, yeah, 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 it's a treasure box you're making. <laughs> right? So, up to you guys to do this way, and you need a headlock. Ah, uh, yeah, think about a padlock like this. That's a padlock. I don't know, that's a very ugly looking padlock. But... And you know, padlock. Something like this. Your design. And it can be something simple. I just want you guys to get into modeling, show me what you do. And this is what I'm going to do for you guys. Come Saturday night. I will be uploading, so I know you guys, unless you guys are, uh, you guys cheat, you are not going to do again. Saturday night, I will be uploading another face, uh, YouTube video, where I will be completing all this, on this. Because next week, we are not going to work on this, we are going something else. We are doing something else. But I want you guys to experience as much modeling as, you know, possible. We are going to go organic. We are going to make something organic, okay? Alright? Organic can be can be now this is not organic, this is uh, straight. So something like um, what did you say? <laughs> what what No no we already more more than an apple. Human something like a human. Uh, okay, let's go with a hand. Actually it's a good idea. Let's go with a hand. Good idea. Right? Not the easiest thing. Yeah. You won't model the head. We will do the head a few. We can do a head, but we. I would rather do the head a few days, a few sessions later, because going in straight into a cartoon head we can make. Okay, Bar Simpson. Yeah. And you guys know Bar Simpson. Okay, we can model the whole Bar Simpson. <laughs> Mean this is what I want to do. Next, here three hours to make a kurele or a kofa. The rest of modeling I will do on uh, YouTube and put it up. And after next week, we will do texturing. We'll have a session about texture. I want to teach you guys displacement. Well, what's the difference between shaders, uh, UV mapping? Uh, like UV mapping, I mean a bow or texture So what what is it? There's a bit of maths involved. So, I mean, you don't need to learn the maths, but you need to start to understand what are these tricks we use. Okay, this all deal with graphics cards saying, I mean, TXA, inare, tessellation, inare. what does all these things mean? Alright? So, there is some reason for that, and these are actually cheap tricks. Honestly, these are cheap tricks to just give you the illusion that what you're seeing is more than what you're seeing. But, it's a trick. Alright? Anyway, complete these things. Next Saturday, I want to see your work. Ah! Sunday. Why do I keep saying Sunday? So, uh, top hinge, that will be two pieces, right? Again, you have to make only one piece for that. Yeah? And the handle, lock and latch, and the padlock. And anything else you want to make? Dead body inside the chest. Make it. <laughs> uh, I think I had to ed edit that before I put that up on <laughs> Uh, let's see if this today's session worked. Okay, any questions first? About what we did now. Alright. Um, I have uploaded uh, this file. Yeah. I will be uploading this file uh, right now. I have uploaded... In a, in your Eclipse folder, there will be a new folder called Practical Sessions. 
I think I called you, right? Couldn't miss. Eclipse folder on your Eclipse in them. Eclipse. Again, nana me me folder me have practical sessions. Yeah, and I have put a zip file because remember blenders blender files are kind of funny. It's not actually a it's not a file. Blender file and uh, double click on that's actually a collection of folders. Right? If you actually open a blender fi file. You are going to see a collection of folders. Okay, the easiest way to open this would be open. Hmm, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. I'll show you. I'll close this to be on the safe side, right? And then I'll open a new Blender file. Let's say I'm going to append. Append gamane ki. I'm bringing something from an existing work document, right? So I'm going to desk desktop my practical, right? And this I click it, and you start to see all these subfolders inside this, right? So this is all the collection of data, and inside this, this is the objects that I have. Remember those things that I was creating? All the objects are here, and if I click any of these things, I can actually import them to this new work folder. Right? Actually, we will cover these things. There, there, there's a lot of tricks that you have to use like this. Um, eventually, if you are going to use... And this is not only a Blender trick. If you are doing Maya, SolidWorks, you have to use these tricks. See, when you make extremely complex scenes, you actually don't do all the work in one file. You actually link objects from other files to your file. Because if I were the key, if you try to work on, let's say, transformer, the, the robot, the detailed robot in one file, your computer, unless your computer is running two, I don't know, SLI graphics cards or something like that, it's going to get slow, right? Even with SLI cards, you're going to get slow. Yeah, because you had also considered the CPU speed, you had to consider RAM and all this stuff. So we do these kinds of things to you know, work with large files. Again, I'm not expecting your files to be extremely large. Right? You can actually do it without using linking at all. Alright, so I'll upload this next session and I'll call it Kotika Kiani. No, I'm not calling it like that. I'm actually Migotam Amin Andere. It just makes it easier. Session 02, 18th November 2013. Alright, so I'll upload this on Eclipse. Alright? Okay. Why the heck am I recording all of this?